Ooh. Uh oh. Ta da! Hello, and welcome to Art Hard. I am Eric Perkins, and in this video, we're going to talk about drawing boxes in one, two, and three point perspective. Boxes are the basic primitive that will be used in creating other primitive shapes in perspective, such as cones, cylinders, and even spheres. We would also use boxes when, to establish the position and size of a human figure in perspective, but we'll get to all that in a later video. So we're going to start today with just the boxes and the different kinds of perspective. So if you don't know anything about drawing perspective, this video should be useful. If you've ever had trouble with perspective, or at least understanding perspective, hopefully this video will help you out there as well. Uh, some very simple supplies that you'll want. You'll need some paper. You'll need a ruler or a straight edge of some sort, a pencil, and an eraser. So let's get to it. Now, one point perspective, there are some elements you're going to want in your drawing. First of all, you're going to want a horizon line, which should be a horizontal line across your image. That is where the ground plane of your drawing ends. It could be placed high or low in your scene, depending on what you want to achieve. And of course, because it's one point perspective, oh, let me label this. That is the horizon line. But because it is one point perspective, we should have one vanishing point, which will be placed somewhere within the scene. For this demonstration, I'm going to put it right here in the center, but it could be anywhere in the scene. Now, an example of one point perspective in real life is, like say you're driving down a highway, and as you drive down that highway, the road appears to disappear in the distance. And even your dotted lines would actually get a little bit smaller as they go into the distance. Uh, you know, the, the lane markings. That's your most basic and most common um, real-life example of one-point perspective. Now, we're going to do some boxes, though. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and freehand the front of a box. Okay, we're going to start with one that's down here below the horizon line. Again, that line across the middle here, that's the horizon line. This is the vanishing point. Any lines that go off into the distance are going to be drawn to that vanishing point. So let's say we have a box here that is below the horizon line. Okay. Now, this is the front side of the box, and the sides that go into the distance get drawn to that vanishing point. Okay, it's a little bit hard to work right here with that um, spiral. And I'm drawing these lines completely to the vanishing point so that we can illustrate that that is where they converge, where, where those lines no longer appear to have any distance on them, or between them. Now, right here we see the front side, we see this side of the box, and we see some of the top of the box. But we've never terminated the box, so it's going all the way to the horizon line. I'm going to go ahead and stop this box right here with a vertical line. A horizontal line that comes across from there over to the other side. So now it is a rectangular box. Your boxes could be square or rectangular. And to demonstrate something else here... Um, let's see, I'm going to try to line this up a little bit. Let me straighten this out. And I'll try to slide this up straight. I'm going to draw a dotted line across here. Alright, that would be the back of the box that we don't see. Um, because it's a solid object. But if it were a clear box, you would see it. Uh, dotted line going down. 
So that is the back face of the box. And then using the vanishing point, we can do a dotted line to show you this bottom back edge over here. So this, oh, and let me darken that line in a little bit. Let me try to get right here. Okay. So this is the solid edges. These are the solid edges of this box in one point perspective. Because it is below the horizon line, we see the top. Because it is to the uh, left of the vanishing point, we're seeing this side, the right side of the box, and we see the front side of the box. Now, if we draw a box above the horizon line, so I'm just going to do a fairly small one here. Okay, with this box, the vanishing point again is to the right of the box. So, we're going to see the right side of the box. And because the vanishing point and the horizon line are below the box, we're going to see the bottom of the box. Okay, and of course we're going to be a little tight up against this rail, so i got to try to measure this out, or get it in there. Draw that line to the vanishing point. Getting this bottom corner in, taking that to the vanishing point. And the back side. Here we go. Okay. And then uh, along here, anywhere that you decide you want to end that box, we'll make this one kind of square. The vertical line, horizontal line. This would also be horizontal. This would be vertical. And so right here, that should be actually line up to the vanishing point if we did it right again you're really only seeing the front the right side and the bottom these back lines are just to show you how that shape actually looks in perspective if you could see through it one more thing I want to show you here in one point perspective is what happens when you have a box that goes above and below the horizon line in this case because the top is above the horizon line the bottom is below the horizon line we will only see the side and so me and this this is pretty close and from right here Okay, and then we terminate this box wherever we want. We can make it square, we can make it rectangle. I'm going to make it a little bit long and rectangular. And so the hidden sides, again, this is a dotted horizontal line because we're just looking into the box. Dotted horizontal line across the bottom. And then as for where those lines should actually terminate I'm going to use my ruler to find these edges so let me do a dot line across here all right looks like it should terminate right about here let me see if that's accurate on the bottom Yeah, that's pretty close. Okay. So, solid face on the front. And a solid face on this, the left-hand side of that box. And the dotted lines for the parts that we don't actually see because the box is solid. Um, again, this is all there is to one-point perspective with boxes. You have a horizon line, a vanishing point, all lines that recede into the distance go to that vanishing point. Your flat lines, or you know, lines that are on the ground, bottom and top, they are going to they're going to be parallel to the horizon. And then your vertical lines, your vertical structure supports, those go vertically up and down. 
uh, so that that's it. That's all there is to one point perspective. Let's move on here to two point perspective. It's slightly more complicated, but not much. Oh, um, before I get into the two point perspective, one last thing, in the case I didn't mention it already. When you're doing one point perspective, your vanishing point should be within your picture frame. You should not, like, take it off your page anywhere because that'll give you a really strange looking one point perspective. Uh, you could do it, but it should be somewhere in your page, probably close to the center. At least close to the center of your horizon line. Your horizon line could be lower or higher, depending on what you want to achieve with it. Um, so going into two-point perspective, let's do this. Because I did this one uh, with the horizon line about in the center, or a little bit high. Let's do this one a little bit low. So I'm going to go ahead and put my ruler down here at the bottom edge of the image. So I get that little bit of distance there. Alright, so this is my horizon line. I'll just go ahead and put an HL on there. Now, in two-point perspective, you have two vanishing points. For the sake of this example, I'm going to go ahead and put them on the left and on the right. Now, the shapes that I make here, they're going to... Um, they're going to be drawn to those vanishing points, and they're going to look a little bit pinched. To release that pinch, if you want less um, less tapering of your receding lines, you'll want to take your vanishing points outside of your image, um, or at least one of them. You should probably always have one vanishing point in your image, uh, but I'll show you this in just a second. So I'm going to label this as VP1, so that's our first vanishing point, or it could be, actually we'll do it, it's vanishing point left, and this will be vanishing point right, VPR. So, any lines that recede into the left are going to this vanishing point, lines that recede going to the right go to this vanishing point. As in the example above, we're going to start with a box below the horizon line. So I'm going to make a fairly small or short box here. Now, this, the, in, where in one point perspective we actually drew the front face of the box, in two point perspective, the only vertical line we're going to have is the vertical support. There will be no horizontal lines in our shapes. So, our bottom line goes over here, goes to vanishing point left, as well as does our top line for the left side. Okay, now for the right side, top and bottom both go to vanishing point right. And I'm going to go ahead and draw them all the way out there. Of course, when you finish your shape, you'll want to erase the extra line. You don't need that in your drawing. So now, when I want to decide how far back this box is going in perspective. I draw my vertical line, that's the back side of the box. And then this back side right here is just like the front side, so we're going to draw the back face of this box going to vanishing point right. Okay, and then Wherever we decide we want to terminate the front face, the front right face of this box is, we can do a, a vertical line again. Um, let's do it right here. Okay, so now we need to draw this edge back to vanishing point left. So that we create a box. And take it all the way there. As you can see, this box is below the horizon line, so we see the top, we see the left, and we see the right. We don't see the back two sides. But you can find those, just like we did up here, by drawing these corners to your vanishing points. So let me go dotted line here, and I'll carry it past the box a little bit. Um, 
And then I'm going to need one on the bottom of the back. Here we go. That should be good. Dotted line. I'm going to take it just a little bit past the box. There we go. Now where these two lines would intersect should be in line with this. So a vertical, it should be a dotted vertical line. That is the invisible back of the box. While this is the solid front that we are seeing. And the solid top. Okay, so nothing new and mystical here other than we're adding a vanishing point, and so more of our lines are getting drawn into the distance to a vanishing point. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a box above the horizon line, just like we did in the first one. So I'm going to start with my vertical line to determine this would be like the top, and this would be where the bottom is. But we're not drawing flat lines because they go to the vanishing points for the for the sides that are receding into the distance. Well, let me take them all the way. Okay, we'll do the other side here. Now you can freehand this and kind of fake it with certain objects um, once you know what you're doing you can just kind of guess where uh, your uh, where, where your vanishing points would be and how those lines would converge but if you want to do something accurate and technical you should definitely do it this way and uh, oh let me show you um, so we're gonna I'm gonna decide how far back this box is going. I'm going to make it fairly long on this side. So it's going to end here. And I think I might make it even longer in the other direction. So it would be like a really long box. Drawing that back line to there. So let's go ahead and end it right here with a vertical line. And then that bottom will go back to this vanishing point and the box itself actually ends there so I'm just going to darken that back line to make sure we don't lose any of it okay and I can darken that top line I think that's where it ended can't really see going through the ruler okay so because this box is above the horizon line, and that horizon line is getting lost now, we've got a lot of lines going on, so let me bolden that up a little bit. Alright, there we go. Now the horizon line is a little bit more bold. This box is completely above the horizon line, so we see the bottom, we see the right side, and we see the left side. Here's where the back meets, so that would be a vertical line where I might want to terminate uh, that side if I were trying to draw it as a uh, transparent or translucent object. Let me do a dotted line back here for that edge. I'll keep it going just a little bit. Do this side. Okay, so now we can see how this box would uh, appear to be if we could see through it. And I'm going to use my eraser to erase some of that extra dotted line back there that we don't necessarily want. Uh, so it's not confusing. Okay, I'm going to get my brush. It's not one of the required tools, but I use that to brush away erasers junk okay so another thing just like we did in uh, one point perspective I'm going to do one box that's both above and below the horizon I'm going to go ahead and put that box right here and 
the one thing that I'm going to concern myself with is I'm going to make sure that bottom is within my picture plane so that I don't lose an edge and have to figure out where it's going. So let's go ahead and do this side of the box. And then we can do the top of that side. And then we can do the bottom of this side. And the top of this side. Okay. Now, of course, things are getting a little bit messy here. We got lines going everywhere. So it can get a little complicated. So you want to do like one shape at a time and try to keep track of where you're at. When you do a lot of shapes, it can get complicated. It's just a matter of using patience and um, deciphering what you're looking at. So I'm drawing right there. That's the back corner of this side, or the back edge of that side. I'll just freehand this into a darker state here. Okay, and then eh, we'll go ahead and stop this one right here. So I just put my horizon line label within this box. Um... And we could stop there. But, again, like the other ones, if we want to see how that box fits into the image, we'll go ahead and do some extra lines here. I'll go ahead and do a dotted line across here. And I'll do, oh, yeah, from here to... You don't always have to draw that back side in. That's, I'm just doing this as an example uh, so that you can see how these shapes look and how you can construct all the way through an object when you're drawing in perspective. All right, so it looks like right about here is where those are gonna converge. And um, where, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm sitting on the wrong vanishing point. Here we go, this line coming back. All right, so these two, yeah, they would probably converge right about there. So that is our third box. Since it is both above and below the horizon line, you do not see the top or bottom of it except when you're looking through it you can see the inside bottom here and the inside top here and the inside of those as if it were transparent um, <clears throat> now we're going to move on to the more complicated one three-point perspective so three-point perspective is most commonly used to get a dramatic effect like um, if you were drawing, say, a figure, and you wanted to make that figure look imposing, you might draw the figure where uh, you're using three-point perspective where the, the additional perspective point is down low. Um, or if you wanted to be looking... Actually, wait a minute. Yeah, I think. Or maybe you would do that where it was up high. Um, I always get a little confused just trying to think about it. Uh, but let's go ahead and do it. Uh, so I can show you what we're doing. Okay, so three-point perspective. Same as before, we're going to need a horizon line. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and just put my horizon line... I'm going to put it a little bit high. Maybe really high on the page. Let's put it right about here. And you can put your horizon line um, wherever you want in the page. You could even put it on an angle if you wanted to. But that is kind of an advanced thing to create a specific uh, effect. Now, because three-point perspective is just adding one more point, we're going to set it up just like two-point perspective to begin with. We've got vanishing point left. 
and we have vanishing point right Okay, um, so we have Vanishing Point left and Vanishing Point right, just as in two-point perspective. Now you're going to have a third Vanishing Point in three-point perspective. That perspective, that Vanishing Point will be kind of like a floater, where these seem like they're attached to the horizon line. Your third point will be either below or above the horizon line, and it can be to the left, to the right, in the center, or whatever. Um, for this one, I'm going to put it approximately center, and I'm going to put it down here. We're going to call this Vanishing Point Bottom. And so the main thing is, when I put this Vanishing Point down low, below the horizon line, we're going to see the tops of anything that's below this horizon line, and they're going to taper as they go down towards this Vanishing Point, which means it's going to look with boxes, it's going to look like we're looking at buildings from above. Um, and now, there will be no lines that are drawn uh, that do not go to a vanishing point. So this is essentially our vertical vanishing point. So let's start with a building. I'm just like why, how I started in, in two-point perspective with a vertical line. Now I'm starting with a line that comes from this vanishing point. This is our vertical. I'm going to draw it all the way to the edge of the page here just to do this. Now, anything to the right of this line is going to this vanishing point. Anything to the left of this line is going to the left vanishing point. So here's going to be the bottom of our line. The bottom of our box. I'm going, in fact, okay, this box, I'm going to put it above the horizon line. Okay, even though that horizon line is super high up there, this building goes just above it. Now, I'm doing the lines for the left side, so vanishing point to the corner. And from the vanishing point to the top corner. Okay. So with this box, we're only going to see the left side and the right side. We won't actually see the top or the bottom. And you can already tell it's going to look kind of skewed. But it gets really skewed. So I'm going to do a vertical line to stop the box over here. I'm going to go with kind of a skyscraper type shape. Or at least like a proportion that makes it look like a skyscraper. Okay. Oh, I didn't continue that all the way. So let me, let me do that the, the right way here. Dot, dot. There we go. Alright. So this vertical, which is at an angle, is going to this vanishing point. Our vertical vanishing point in three-point perspective. This is the bottom of the box. This is the bottom of the box. And so coming from the vertical vanishing point, we're going to draw the back edge of this box over here. All right. And now you can see how skewed this box looks. It's very weird looking, almost like a um almost like a pyramid that's inverted. And that is one of the effects that happens when you're looking at stuff in three-point perspective. <clears throat> so if your box looks like this or even possibly even more skewed, it may not be that you did something wrong. It may be how this perspective looks. So when you're doing three-point perspective in a drawing, one of the biggest things you can do to help improve it would be to take... Definitely take your top or bottom, your vertical vanishing point. Take that as far outside of the uh, outside of your image as you can. 
Um, like if you can put a piece of tape on your table that's maybe another 12 inches away from your drawing and then draw with a long ruler from there, that would make it do a lot less skewing. And then take at least one of these vanishing, well, I would say take one of these vanishing points off of your image. I mean, you could take them both. With three-point perspective, having all three outside of your image will give you a much gentler um, fisheye effect. Um, and look pretty cool. You can cram them all in tight like this, and you get some really distorted things. It all depends on what you want to achieve. Now, so this box goes above and below, as, as I discussed. Oh, let me go ahead and do... Um, we'll stay consistent. I'll do the uh, back sides that you don't see. So dotted line coming through here. And I'm going to carry it well through there because I'm not sure where exactly these things will end. Dotted line across here. Looks like that back corner would probably be right around here. Um, let's kind of do this along the bottom the back bottom side okay yeah it looks like it's gonna be right about there so I can angle this to right there oh all right, so I must have misinterpreted that. Let's see. Let's see how this looks when I do this. Okay, and yeah, that looks okay. Um, so yeah, right there. Oh, and I did not dot that line, but. This is the back. This is the actual solid line. Let me just darken this in freehand. All right. So again, we only see on the outside the, the left and right side of this box because it is both above and below the horizon line. Now let's do one that is below the horizon line. Um, right, so here's the thing you can do is just kind of figure out where you want to put your box. Maybe put a little mark for it and so those two marks they aren't going to any particular uh, vanishing point, just kind of a placeholder to say, I want to put my box about right there. I'm going to start with the front corner vertical, and I'll stop it right around there. Okay, and you can see the skew here. This line almost lines up perfectly with the line from the vanishing point to the left. That is part of why things are looking a little bit screwy here and is why you want to take your vanishing points oops you want to take them outside of the image if you can because it will give you less of that distortion now let's do the top of this box and given the skew of this thing we might actually just barely see the left side of the box all right Going past that box. There we go. Now. Yeah. So the bottom corner down here going to vanishing point left. As you can see right here, it's tight. It barely, it, it kind of flares out from the vertical line. Now we're going to do the top line on that side. Alright, so you can see we get that really tight tangent across there. And that is part of the fisheye effect. 
let's go ahead and do the back side of the box here the edge oops I just shifted my ruler hold on okay and just for the sake of argument let's go ahead and terminate this box right here Oop, I don't want to make that dotted and then take this edge down to the vanishing point so these two buildings their vertical lines are very close together and because of the width of the pencil they actually almost meet very close now this back edge on the left will yeah it's going to be very very clipped and so this is actually the back edge there's a very tiny little bit right there that you could see of the left side of this box because of this um, warping effect and just to better illustrate where this box is ending let's get rid of these extra lines back here all right and so because of how that ends it's very difficult to tell you exactly where the back side of this box is but i think we might still be able to find it so let's do the dotted line down here okay and then i do know that this is the corner of that so we're going back to here from there all right now these lines seem to intersect right about here and so that is approximately where the bottom comes together on the uh, back sides it may not be perfect because of how tight that is but it gives you the general idea of how this box is constructed <clears throat> and then um, it's gonna be very hard to do one that's completely above the horizon line in this drawing but let me see, let me go ahead and cheat one sort of so all we're gonna do I'm going to take it right over here. So in this particular perspective, it would be very difficult probably to get a box, like a building or something, that would be sitting above the horizon. Unless it was flying for some reason. But we're going to go to here. So this is the bottom. This is going back to vanishing point right. I'm going to go ahead and continue. We're just going to continue this line into our two-point perspective drawing, just so I have it, instead of just faking it. So let's say that's the top of the box there. Okay. And then... Here's the top going to the left. and the bottom going to the left <clears throat> and I'm gonna darken our horizon line because it's all getting kind of crowded here and if you're noticing already that this one is going to also be very skewed and weird looking then you'd be right because again we've got this extreme uh, vanishing point system this fisheye effect so when we see the bottom of this box it's going to look really really weird it's going to be um, kind of like how over here you don't even see that that left side even though the left vanishing point is further away just like here all right so let's terminate this box right about here 
Okay, and then the back side going to this vanishing point. Oh, and I'm not carrying those lines all the way to the vanishing point. Um, I, but they would, if, if you needed to show that they went all the way there, you would want to do that. I will carry this one, just, just for the sake of argument here. Alright. So now this one, it almost looks like a cube on this side, and then it looks more like a prism on that side. And that's what I was talking about. It's going to look a little weird in this perspective. Alright, so this line is here. That line is going back. Okay. So, we do see the bottom right here. It's kind of a weird rectangular shape. And then I'll draw the invisible sides for you, or the hidden sides. Okay. Um, right, so from here. All right. Just trying to figure out where I'm aiming for because some of that, is, like the angle, is very hard to see. All right, so this back side actually almost lines up perfectly with the front side, but it's a little different. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this extra stuff back here. The, the carry-through lines that we don't necessarily need in a finished drawing. So that we get a better sense of the actual shapes here. And so, as you can see, one point perspective is... Um, you know, the simplest, and it's kind of like being on a highway. Two-point perspective, you're always looking at something from a corner, okay? Instead of looking at it straight on, you're always looking at it from a corner. In three-point perspective, you get this distortion of um, the tapering effect where your verticals are going to a vanishing point. And again, this vanishing point doesn't have to be at the bottom. It could also be up high at the top. And in in two and three point perspective, it's usually a good idea to take at least one vanishing point out of your picture frame by putting it somewhere else, like on your drawing surface, if you can draw a line long enough to reach there. With three point perspective, it might be best to take all three of them out of your uh, drawing area but definitely, if only one, I would say take that vertical one and move it far, far away from your, from your image plane so that this tapering effect is reduced, unless that's the effect that you want to achieve. Um, now, I'm going to show you uh, some examples of drawings that I did uh, in school and for this video using the different types of perspective. In my next video, we will discuss creating cylinders, spheres, and cones in one, two, and three point perspective. I'm going to do several perspective videos because there are a lot of different things you can learn about them. So definitely come back and watch my other videos. Hopefully I'll help you to understand perspective drawing so you can create some cool perspective drawings of your own. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, click that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, uh, click the subscribe button. I'll see you soon. Thanks.